is the case with much quality religious and uh, quality literature, is the question of the mystery of evil. And um, the revelation of the reality and the extent of child sexual abuse in our own church, and uh, I would say also in the future probably in society, confronts our church, every Catholic, every Christian, and indeed humanity with the reality of evil in places where one expects nothing but goodness. The question is, how does the church deal with evil? How do we handle evil? How do we respond? Um, it is simply not simply, it is obviously not simply a matter of saying, well, forgiveness and nothing else. Forgiveness is at the core of the gospel message, but so also is responsibility and accountability, and so also is um, the dictum of Jesus Christ that a child should never be interfered with nor damaged in any way. The early centuries of church history were confronted with this problem. And the church fought with and wrestled with this problem of evil, of betrayal, in the third and fourth centuries. In North Africa, in the context of the Donatist crisis, where among the many other issues which were at stake in that crisis was the question of the worthiness of ministers, of priests, of bishops, of preachers, of deacons, who may have handed over the scriptures to the persecutors, thereby saving their lives. It took several hundred years for the position of St. Augustine to be embedded in the understanding of the church, to underline the fact that the Catholic Church and every Christian church is at once sinful and holy. This doesn't mean that license is given to you know, doing anything and everything, but rather that within the community of believers there is the totality of humanity with its power, its goodness, its weakness and also its capacity for evil. The tradition of the penitentials and the evolution of the practice of the sacrament of reconciliation, which is referred to in the letter launching the Year for Priests as a dialogue, a dialogue of salvation and forgiveness, that is something which we need to reappropriate. In other words, the evil is named, it is acknowledged, the outworking and impact of that evil on others has to be identified and healed. But this means also that where uh, errors of judgment are made, where um, uh, inadequacy of practice has occurred, that the solution is not always the simplistic solution. That the solution, the Christian solution, is one which challenges not only imagination, not only the capacity to forgive, but it challenges us to understand that whilst not in any way tolerating license nor wrongdoing, that the person whom, against whom an offence has, be, uh, has been committed has to be healed, but so also the person who is the sinner needs also to be healed. And these are the almost irreconcilable challenges in this issue of child sexual abuse, the abuse of vulnerable adults and minors which certainly our church, and I think too our society, is confronted with. They are not easy of answers. They require new discourses. They require new ways of being church, of managing the life of the church, and they demand also a tremendous leap of self-acceptance, of responsibility for human action in its positives and negatives on the part of 